guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the Alchemy Sports Performance Podcast. My name is Charles Schultz. This is my business partner, Kyle Bobo. Uh, we are the owners of Alchemy Sports Performance in Columbus, Ohio, and we felt like we were missing something. So there, you know, there's a lot of people out there training. There's a lot of opportunities for sports performance. Um, I think there needs to be more education in what sports performance is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time every week and talk about some of the some of the struggles that we're having, some of the things that we see and notice in the sports performance world, and maybe even dip into some programming and some different things like that. But ideally what we're doing is we're just trying to educate. We're trying to advance what we're doing and expand upon the training aspect of things that we see every week doing what we do on the floor. So we're going to dig into that a little bit. Uh, today we're going to get to, we're going to introduce ourselves to you, get, give you a chance to know us a little bit and maybe dip into uh, one or two topics. But uh, I'll let Kyle go first, introduce himself, and we'll go from there. Uh, so yeah, like Charles said, I'm Kyle, um, part owner of Alchemy Sports Performance. Um, yeah, I mean, really, obviously, background in sports and different stuff like that. As we as we were growing up, um, obviously, both of us did that, which was what kind of led us to, I guess, what we're doing now and like this whole um, business venture, this journey that we're on, kind of trying to pass down our experiences and our knowledge to i guess you know everyone that we're training whether whether that's younger kids or older adults and everything in between um that sort of thing um and kind of like you mentioned before i think that like that's another reason why we wanted to kind of like get on here and do a little bit longer video so that we can kind of have a chance to sit down and kind of talk about some of the things that we would more or less have conversations about like in the gym that we don't necessarily usually get to put out on social media platforms or something like that, that um, I feel like kind of moves the needle in that direction as far as getting more of the messages and the different types of things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis in here out for people or others to, to kind of see and hopefully benefit off of. Obviously, like we most of the stuff that we're trying to do or want to do is we're trying to do it to benefit someone else in, in, in the long run, I think. So, yeah. So a little bit of background on, uh, myself, I started training in 2008. I did not actually graduate with a, uh, degree in sports science. I, I graduated with a history degree, but as a college athlete, I don't know how many of you are familiar with what it's like. Um, they make you have a certain percentage towards your degree to be eligible. So by the time I realized that this was where I wanted to take my life, uh, I would have been ineligible. So I spent a lot of time on the side studying, researching, um, doing some internships and, and trying to advance my knowledge in that end. So uh, thankfully I found some really good mentors. I found some good, some good leadership and uh, it's led me down a, a path that I feel is, is the right one for, from an education standpoint. And now we, we run three or four different teams a day, um, three to four groups of high school athletes, and then mix in some general population in between. But um, the biggest thing, like, like Kyle said, is let's get some education going. Let's get some questions flying back and forth. Hopefully over time, you guys begin to interact with us and we can answer some of your questions. Because I know there's a lot of questions out there and a lot of times the answers aren't always from people who are actually doing this for a living. Um, I think that's an interesting piece about this is you get a lot of people who answer on social media who they've never actually trained a team. They've never actually trained an athlete and reading it in a book and doing it in application are two different things. You know, it all looks real pretty in a book. Sometimes things don't really play out the way you want. You have to make some adaptations on the fly and you have to understand how to progress and regress exercises to make sure that all your athletes are getting where they need to go. Um, my background is a college baseball player, played sports, um, and that's kind of where my first love for weightlifting happened. I was actually a strength and conditioning All-American, which led me to really falling in love with the weight room. And ever since that's kind of been my passion to, to understand how to help people get more athletic not just get stronger but get more athletic because how do we translate what we do in here to the to the field that's that's the big question that's the big tipping point i think for young athletes is can what you do in the weight room help you on the field 600 pound deadlift looks cool but does that 600 pound deadlift help you do you get more explosive can you jump better can you run faster and that's kind of where we're at 
yep. um, with developing this stuff. So what I think we should dig into today a little bit, since we do have um, one of our teams that's been working us, with us for a while is actually in season. So one of the things that we struggle with a lot of times with especially our young athletes is they don't want to train during the season. So what I want to do is, is dig into a little bit of the myths, dig into some of the misconceptions and, and why in-season training is valuable. So Kyle, over your time training with athletes, what do you feel is the biggest reason why kids don't want to train in season? Um, I think there, I mean, there's different, I guess it's a case by case basis, right? A lot of kids, Unfortunately, they're they're pulled in a lot of different ways um, when they're in season. So coaches are asking them to do things. They're doing things with with travel sports, or you know, they're they're going to school. Plus, they have homework. Plus, they have all of these different things. So a lot of it is that that, that they're being pulled in so many different directions that it's hard for them to kind of like um, set a, a routine in place or be able to commit to certain activities that is outside of the sport, which is problematic. Um, a lot of the kids think that since you know their sport is so demanding and they're going, going, going all the time, that they're going to be too sore, too tired, and this is just going to continue to add to the amount that they're doing and the fatigue factor and the wear and tear on their body throughout the season. Um, those those are a few of the things that we tend to see a lot as far as why kids usually tend to kind of trail off on the training piece during season. What would you say to a kid if they come to you and they're like, well, I, I don't want to be sore when I play games? Uh, I would say one, if you're working with someone that legitimately knows what they're doing and knows how to program and change the program for you being in season versus an out of season program, um, that person should be able to tailor the program to you being in season and with the understanding of that there's already a lot of wear and tear and fatigue that's going on in your body. Um, so they should kind of back some things down and work on a lot of more movement based patterns and different things like that and not worrying about how much weight and constantly trying to hit PRs within the season. Um, I would also say that if you continue to maintain what you have been doing as far as a training protocol during the season, that your body is going to adapt to that and it's going, it's going to not affect you quite as quite as much as it would if you take the whole off season and you peak on your athletic development and then the season comes in and you just completely drop back down to zero and then once the season's over and you pick back up training again and weightlifting and the athletic development stuff and all of that then your body is going to go through a shock period again and it's going to be really sore and really tired and super fatigued your muscles are going to be really sore because they haven't experienced anything as far as the breaking down for you know however long that your season is but i think that if you do a better job of staying consistent throughout with your training then you won't see nearly so much of a dip in and uh the the, mus the muscular fatigue and soreness and different stuff like that after the season's over. Yeah, I think, I mean, the thing that gets forgotten a lot of time is how adaptable the human body is. Yeah. Like, we build routines and we become more or less systematic with our day-to-day -day activity. And if we continue with the training programs that we've done up to the start of the season, but then we all, we're gonna back it down a little bit and actually continue to work through that. Right. The increased activity from practice, but the decreased load in the weight room balances itself out to where it recovers your body faster because now you're you're training through that that period of adaptation to the start of the season where let's be honest once you start playing games you're going to be sore right the body no matter how much you practice the game is just a different level you're going to take your your game up you're going to work the the intensity up so if you're not using the weight room to offset that and then you take that break like you said you come back in the off season you basically you're starting back at zero yep. and, and Another thing that I've noticed is the kids that work out through the season continue to perform at a high level where the kids who don't, you see a drop off in their performance. You see yep. a reduction in their power yep. and maybe even an increase in injury. Right. So talk to me a little bit about how balancing the recovery aspect of weightlifting can help prevent and hopefully stave off some of those non-contact injuries that we see. All right. So, uh, I mean, well, first of all, like you kind of mentioned, um, there's going to be a lot of wear and tear and fatigue on your body. I think that if you're not doing something to keep your body conditioned to the elements of sport, then you're, you're, you're weakening your body along with the breakdown. You're not doing anything to combat that. I think that a lot of people 
a lot of people look at the training piece or the weightlifting or, or certain things that they would be doing as far as the training thing to to uh, that it like it, it continues to break their body down and break their body down right i think that they're not looking at it as far as like this is actually building my body up or at least maintaining my body right so you spend all of the time um, working to increase your your overall athleticism your develop your athletic development your your strength all of that right and you get that up to a, a peaking point right before the season and then you do nothing and that breaks your body back down it, it you lose strength you get weak you have weakness in your body which then is going to set you up for injuries and different things like that um and then you kind of your your threshold or your peak is now down to here right and then you Season's over after you wore your body down and you did nothing to try and combat that wear and tear on your body and then you want to peak back up. It's going to take you X amount of time to get back to even where you were, right? So so the the people that train year-round and they they usually perform at such a, a better rate is because they're, they're working to combat that wear and tear on their body. They're keeping their body strong. They're continuing to do those injury preventative type of of movements or just training protocol in general and they're kind of keeping their body at at least like a maintaining type of point instead of losing all of that strength and and weakening the muscles and and then weaker muscles weaker body more injuries are prone to happen yeah i think a word that gets forgotten a lot of times is resilience like the resilience of the body is developed through the strength training the stronger we are and the more we maintain that the more wear and tear we can withstand and with today's athlete you know most of them are in season most of the year. Yep. So if you're waiting to train during the off season, you're getting a three month window. Very, very short window. Of a 12 month year. Yes. You're not getting much stronger. You're not gaining much. So you're by going, time you're, going, going all right. the time, nonstop. And you're trying, to, you're trying to really work on the strength pieces and increases in speed and working on body mechanics and different stuff like that in a very short window. And the rest of the time, if you're not training or doing anything like that, then you're just kind of go you're just going 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 and there's so much wear and tear without any trying to to work against that that it's you're setting yourself up for injury because you're doing so much as far as the sports go that's just breaking your body down breaking 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 and never really kind of building back up never even recovery pieces and different stuff like that and like paying attention to uh, eating properly eating enough hydrating sleeping um like recovery as far as like actually doing things for recovery i think is continuing to become more and more known and and like normatec boots and theraguns and all of that stuff that is actually working to help the body recover nobody i shouldn't say nobody but not enough people are paying attention to those pieces along with the training pieces and different things like that it's just so much and the athletes are being pulled in so many different directions with their sports and the demand on the sport and the things that they have to do for sport practice games you know all of that type of stuff um that the these kind of pieces kind of just get pushed down to the bottom and the bottom and the bottom right and then that's when you see uh just athletes just being run down tired constantly fatigued sore injured you know in some cases and things like that yeah you know it's, it's it's a lot there's a lot of pieces we can go with that and as you guys can see there's a lot of areas that we can cover within this 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 realm this podcast so um subscribe to what we're doing follow along with our journey if you have questions if you're a practitioner you have questions ask them let us know maybe we can dig into some of the details with that if you're an athlete and you have questions reach out to us uh one of the big things and the reasons why we got into this is we want to help people so we do our best to make sure that we stay up with the, the cutting edge trends. We want to make sure that we're on the, the right side of the information that's coming out. Um, and we want to share that with you guys. So that's kind of the idea behind all this. That's why we're putting this together. So hopefully you took something from that. If you're an athlete out there, odds are you're in season these days. That's the way it works. I mean, with travel sports and non-season games, you know, I, we work with a lot of baseball athletes. And literally in Ohio, the only time they're not playing is from... November to February. That's not a lot of time to get better. That's not a lot of time to get stronger. So find ways to train in season. If you have questions about your training, reach out. We'll help you out. All right. Until next time, guys, this is the Alchemy Sports Performance Podcast. Take it easy.